Hello there and welcome to Passport to the Past, read all about it. It's lovely to see you all here today. Now, before we start our session, um, there's just a couple of things that might be really useful for you to know before we press on ahead. Um, first of all, if you have managed to print out the Passport to the Past, you will be needing the special pages that are focused on newspapers, most of which you can see just to the left hand side. Now, if you haven't had a chance to print these out, please don't worry. Um, we will put them up on the screen when we talk about them. Um, a couple of pieces of paper, though, would be really useful um, when we come to those activities. Um, secondly, you'll need a pen or a pencil. Um, if you have some coloured pens or pencils, that would also be really helpful for both of the activities, though you don't have to have them. Um, and if it is your parents' name on the screen, it'd be really great if you could change it to your name instead, um, your first name only, if you wouldn't mind. And that way, if you do ask any questions or you want to contribute to this session, um, it means that we know who it is um, and we're not calling you by your parents' name. Um, also, just to say that the way um, today is going to work in this session is that I'm going to be showing you a presentation for a lot of the session, um, but you will have a little box that hopefully has my uh, face in it so I will be talking you through it and explaining things and very occasionally I'll be showing you items on my video as well that's focused on me. Now depending on the type of device that you have you might already find that my um, my picture is put just to the right or the left of the screen which is great. Um, if um, you're on something like an iPad and it's covering some of the text you might be able to drag it um, to a good place and what I've done with most of the pages is I've left a bit of space at the top left hand corner corner um, for, um, for you to drag the picture to if you can do that and that way hopefully you won't miss any of the images or things like that. Um, so um, if you would like to ask questions during the session, um, please do so at any time. You can either raise your hand um, or you can type it into chat. Um, for the rest of the time, we ask that you put yourself on mute and it just means that if you've got a dog barking or a little brother and sister uh, making a noise that you don't have to worry about it. Um, if we don't uh, get to all your questions as we're going along, um, please don't worry, we will have a question and answer session right at the end, um, so we will manage to answer hopefully all questions. Um, we'll also be filming this session, so if you're not happy about um, uh, appearing on the recording, please turn your camera off. And finally, I'm just going to give you just a minute or two to sort out those things if you need to gather up some paper or a pen and pencil just to get those things ready um, before we start. So we'll just give you a minute or two. OK. Uh, whilst you're doing that, I just wanted to check, can everybody hear me okay? Do you want to just unmute yourself and give me a shout if you can hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yes. Everybody all right? Fantastic. That's really great. If you do have any problems as you go along, just mention it in chat, um, just so that we're aware, but hopefully it'll work okay today. Just give you another minute. Okay, so I think we're going to um, start there. So hopefully you're all ready to begin. Um, so welcome to our session today. It's a very special session that is all about newspapers. And we're going to be showing you all about them. And then towards the end, we're also going to have a go at making our own. Now, the session is called Read All About It. And that's because in the past, when they were selling newspapers, the newspaper companies often employed children such as yourself to go out onto the streets and to sell those newspapers. And they would shout very loudly, read all about it. And they would do that to try and get people's attention so that hopefully they would come and buy the newspaper.
Now, normally at this point in the session, I normally ask you all to unmute so we can all say a big hello to one another. But because today we're called Read All About It, we're instead going to unmute ourselves and we're going to shout out read all about it as if we were newspaper sellers from the past. So if you'd like to unmute yourself now, and then I'll give you a counting of three. Are you all ready? Excellent. Okay. So on the count of three, one, two, three. Read all about it. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Um, if you'd like to just pop yourself back on mute um, and we will start the session. So um, what are we going to be doing today? Well, first of all, we're going to be finding out about how people discover the news before there were newspapers. We're going to be looking at the type of stories you can find in the newspapers. And finally, as I said at the beginning, we're going to have a go at you having, uh, sorry, you making your own newspaper. So how did people find out about news in the past? So this document here is about 500 years old, and it's one of the items that we keep here at the archives. It was written by Henry VIII, who is one of the most famous kings ever. And in the top, top right hand corner, you can see a picture of Henry VIII. You can see you've got a big letter H for Henry. And then he's the man right in the middle there with all his advisors around him. And in this document, King Henry VIII set out the laws for those living in the city of Gloucester. Although not a newspaper, you could learn lots of things such as who the king was and what he looked like. And again, you can see him in that image. But if you're thinking, I've seen pictures of Henry VIII because he's so famous and he didn't look anything like the man in that picture. That's because this uh, particular picture was done when he was a younger man. And most of the images we know of Henry VIII was when he was a bit older than in this image. Um, you could also, from this document, find out what you could and couldn't do in Gloucester. However, barely anybody would be able to see this document. Plus, it was written in a completely different language. It was written in Latin. And although the picture doesn't show it that clearly, you can probably see that the handwriting would have been very difficult to read. And it didn't tell you that much about what was going on in the country or where you lived. And now I'm going to show you one of the documents that we have here in the archives. So my colleague is just passing me this wonderful image. So if I just hold this up and just tip it so that the light isn't cover it, isn't make it reflect too much. So the document that you see in front of you is another one we have in the archives, and it's just a little bit older than the one we just saw, so probably closer to 600 years old. And this is the kind of item that told you a little about, bit about what was going on in the local area, including what the rent was for certain houses and buildings within the city. And you can see it's extremely delicate. That's why we've got it in a piece of plastic because it's so incredibly fragile. I'll just pop that one to one side. You probably noticed that the handwriting was quite difficult again to read. So again, although you could learn certain things from that, it probably wasn't as good as a newspaper. So we're just going to go back onto the um, document, uh, sorry, back onto the presentation. So we're just going to find out about how ordinary people found out about the news. Because at the time, most people couldn't read or write. So even though they had those documents I just saw you, showed you, most people actually couldn't read them or wouldn't even have been able to know where they were kept. So they found out about news in different ways. First of all, they told stories and they sang songs. Now, you all know a lot of different nursery rhymes, but did you know that a lot of nursery rhymes are actually about real events? And the one you can see there is Humpty Dumpty. And Humpty Dumpty is actually a song about a real battle that took place. They also had town criers, and you can see two pictures of them. So the one at the top is an American town crier from about 100 odd years ago. And then the one at the bottom, you might even recognise because this is a local town crier. And this is how today they tend to dress 
uh, in places like England. And a town cry was very important in the past because they would go into the center of towns and cities, they would ring their bell so that everybody could hear them, and then they would shout out really loud what the news was. So they would tell people about new laws, they would tell them about what days the market was taking place. They would even go to executions and they would stand there before the person was executed and they would read out what the criminal criminal had done and why they were being hung. So they were really, really important and we still have them today. Now, if there was some kind of danger today, if that happened to us, if we were, you know, if there was um, a war or something like that, then we would be able to find out that news really quickly. Not only are there newspapers, but we have radios and TVs and phones and the internet. But in the past, they didn't have any of those things. So one of the ways that they told people that there was a danger in the area was that on top of very high hills, they would light a bonfire and people could see that for miles around. And if that bonfire was lit, they knew that there was some type of danger. So when did newspapers actually start? Well, first of all, a newspaper is a booklet page or poster containing news items. To be a newspaper, it has to be printed regularly. Now, newspapers were originally handwritten, so imagine how long it would take you just to write a few newspapers. And of course, those early ones tended to be very short because otherwise they would take too long to produce. But newspapers as we know them today really got going in the 1600s and this is because they invented something called the printing press and on the picture to the right hand side you can see a picture of what a printing press looked like. Now the way a printing press works and I'm going to keep this really simple but just to say that this is an amazing subject in itself so if you find this interesting after the session you can go onto the internet and places like the BBC have loads of really good videos and things like that explaining it in more detail. But the printing press worked by selecting all the letters you wanted to use. And in the bottom left, you can see them. You can see there are metal letters and they would have to line them up into a sentence. And again, in the other picture, you can see that, but you can see that actually all the letters are back to front, which they had to be. They would cover the letters with ink they would put paper on that and then they would press it down. And that is how newspapers were made to begin with. And they could be made much quicker. And because of that, this was where newspapers really started. But it's a great subject if you want to know more about it. Um, if you want to have a go of finding out how difficult and time consuming it was to do it, um, in the pages that you've got this month with the Passport to the Past, you have the four pages you can see below. And you can see that these are all letters cut out from newspapers. If you have those pages, you can have a go at cutting out all the letters that you need to write your name and then try sticking them down. And that will give you a good idea about how those early newspapers were made. So what were early newspapers like? Well, first of all, we have lots of newspapers here at the archives and we have them going back at least 300 years. And the one to the right you can see is the earliest Gloucestershire newspaper. This is the Gloucester Journal and this is the front page of the first edition of the first ever newspaper. And it was written on Monday the 9th of April in 1722. Now, in some ways, early newspapers were a lot like today's newspapers. First of all, they had the name of the newspaper at the top. Secondly, they included foreign, national and local news. And finally, they had today's date. But in other ways, newspapers were very different. For a start, there was no snappy title telling you about what the story was about. Secondly, the story looks much more like a letter. And finally, you can see that it is addressed to gentlemen, which are rich men. So the people making newspapers at the beginning didn't think that women or poorer men would actually read these newspapers. And the biggest difference at all is that there were no photographs. And here you can see a page from a newspaper in 1839. And can you see there are no photographs at all? And this page would have been probably very difficult to read. So 
We're going to just stop there for a moment. And this is a part where I'd really like you all to jump in and tell me what you think. So what do you think that the big stories are today? If we were to look on the front page of a newspaper, what sort of stories might there be? What might they be about? So don't forget to unmute yourself. So Elia, if you'd like to unmute yourself. Um, it's, um, I think that maybe on the front of the newspaper today might be Prince Philip's um, funeral, maybe. Yes, that's a really good one, Elia. And newspapers have always been interested in what the royal family are doing. But you're quite right. Prince Philip died in the last couple of weeks. And of course, his funeral was a really big thing. So I think you're absolutely right. That's a really good one. Does anyone else have any other ideas? Jacob? Oh, Jacob, do you want to unmute yourself? There we go. Uh, Russia annexing uh, parts of Ukraine, so like foreign affair type things. Yes, yeah, very important. And it's great that you picked out Russia because, of course, a lot of foreign news often focus on Russia. That's great. Thank you, Jacob. Any other ideas? Well, yeah. COVID. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt, isn't there, that this is the big story from the last 12 months. I think I'd be very surprised if there was nothing about COVID on the front cover. Can anyone think of any other stories that you think are maybe important, maybe that should be on the front cover of a newspaper? Nathan, are you putting your hand up? Yeah, uh, I, I know there was a uh, recent uh, accident involving a train in Mexico, and that's on the uh, BBC News' front page. Yes, that's really current, Nathan. That's that's a great one to mention, you know, and an awful tragedy, but often news is unfortunately not very nice. Go on, Seb. Oh, you need to just uh, take your um, mute off. Um, yeah, you can talk. Um, that the coronavirus vaccine is ready. Yes, absolutely. Yes, vaccinations are really important. And in fact, when we come to the end of this, this session, and we have a look at today's current uh, newspapers, I think you'll find that that one might just come up. Would anyone like to offer any others or shall we move on? Okay, let's carry on. Thank you. We'll just go back to the presentation. Thank you for that. Okay, so what might we find in a newspaper? Well, we might find big stories on the front page. We might find less important or perhaps just less interesting stories on the next few pages. There might be local stories, especially if they're local newspapers, and entertainment, including television listings. Uh, we might find games and puzzles, sports normally on the back pages, and of course, adverts, and we can see one there on the right. So here are some examples of big stories on the front page. And the one that you can see in front of you is the Gloucester Journal, and it is from 1939, and it was just a few days after the outbreak of World War II. And we'll just bring a couple of those pictures up so we can see them a little bit better. And not surprising, the front page at this time was all about the war and the outbreak. And you can see that it mentions evacuees. So those were people who were moving to the countryside during the war to escape the bombing. There is also recruiting soldiers. And at the bottom, we can see men building defences. We can also see some more modern front pages. OK, and here we've got a local newspaper front page. So we can see, for example, at the women's race at Cooper's Hill cheese rolling and wake event. And that's still a really popular event today. That one is from 1949. And we often also find lots of pictures of weddings and children. Now, if you run a newspaper company, you want to make sure that lots of people are buying your newspaper. And one way to do that is to make sure that people appear in it. So by taking wedding photographs and also taking pictures of children at school and in events, it meant that people went out and bought that copy. So, for example, if you were to appear in a newspaper, and I bet some of you have in the past, your parents probably went straight out and bought a copy of that newspaper. So these were very important to people who were running them. 
And I've got a great bit from a newspaper here. This is from 1722. And I couldn't resist putting this in because it's just so interesting. So newspapers often include information and interesting bits of information. And what we actually hear, have here is we have the list of causes of death in a week in London in 1722. And I'll just give you a moment to look through some of these. And we have some quite funny, quite unusual, quite sad, um, different types um, of causes of death. For example, we have one person who died from worms. We've also got 49 people who died from teeth problems. And of course, today, we wouldn't think people would die from teeth problems, but back then they didn't have dentists. You can see that two people died from evil, and we don't really know what that was. We also have quite unusual names, things like chin coughs. Um, it's uh, hard to wonder what that might be. Um, I wish we could spend a bit more time on this because this is the kind of thing that is really interesting to look up and find out what a lot of these things are. But the kinds of diseases and illnesses we see here, a lot of them do still exist today. It's just that they aren't the sort of things that, uh, that um, you know, you can't be dealt with. We have medicines for them. And most of them now have slightly different names than some of the weird, weird ones we have here. OK, we'll move on. Um, we also have lots of games and puzzles and lots of people buy the newspaper just because they want to do the crossword. And if you do like puzzles, just to say that we do have um, various puzzles in the passport uh, resources. Um, so what we're now going to do is we're going to stop for a few minutes so that you can have a go at an activity. And what you're going to be doing is creating a lost dog poster. So at the bottom, we can see an extract from a newspaper from 1722. So this is before photographs. They couldn't just put a picture in of the dog and say, this is the dog that's missing. They had to describe it. So if you have a look at the bottom, um, it says, um, whereas a white greyhound with yellow ears and a yellow stripe upon the left shoulder and a bone displaced in the toe of his right foot. Uh, was lost on the 27th of April. So what I'd like you to do is using um, pen and pencil and a piece of paper is to have a go at drawing the dog that's described in this description. And I'm going to give you about three, four minutes. So I'll do about three minutes, then I'll see where you all are. And as always, um, if you would like to share what you've done um, at the end of that time, that would be fantastic, but you don't have to. Um, do you want me to just read that description one more time? Should we just do it one more time? So it's a white greyhound with yellow ears and a yellow stripe on its left shoulder. And I don't know how you would put this in the drawing, but it has a bone displaced in the toe of its right foot. OK, want to give that a go? Um, I'm not going anywhere. So if you have any questions, just give me a wave.
Hi all, hope you're still okay. We'll just aim for another minute or so. Does that sound all right? I'm gonna take that as a yes. Fantastic, everyone. I can already see a couple of absolutely adorable pictures. So if uh, if you, those of you who'd like to share it, if you'd like to hold it up. Oh, Seb, that this is absolutely brilliant. Well done, Elia. That's great. And I see you tried to put in the bone as well, which is great. George, how have you done? Oh, fantastic. Oh. <laughs> and that does look a lot like a greyhound. Would anyone else like to share? Nathan, do you want to share? You don't have to. Oh, wonderful. Really well done. Well done, everyone. That's really great. Okay, should we uh, carry on? Okay, so we're now going to uh, show you how to create your own front page news story. And of course, at the end of this, um, you'll get to have a go at one yourself. Um, so first of all, the front page should include a title or a headline. Um, it tells you about what the story is about, and it's often quite snappy. There'll also be a story. This is a mixture of fact and opinion about what happened. So facts are things that you could actually research or look up and prove to be true or false. So, for example, if I said that Paris was the capital city of France, you could actually look that up and say, yes, that's correct. Whereas an opinion, you can't really prove it to be uh, correct or not. And quite often different people have different opinions about the same thing, but they perhaps uh, don't agree with each other. So it's great if you can have a mixture of both of those. Um, we also like there to be a photograph with a caption and also there's always adverts as well within newspapers. So let's just break some of these down a little bit. So the title or headline. So the title should tell you about what the story is about. Um, as I said, it's often short and snappy and they sometimes use words that start with the same letter because it sounds good. So, for example, you can see the headline there, Bobby's on bin patrols, and it just comes out really nicely and the headline should make you want to read the story um going to the picture and captions so the picture is really important um you can often work out what the story is just from looking at the picture and then often you need to add a caption and a caption is something that is short and catchy but tells you what is going on so i'm going to show you a couple of pictures and what I want you to do, we'll show you one at a time. I'd like you to guess what the story is about. Um, just before we do, um, Elia, have you got a raised hand? Yes, do you want to unmute yourself? Um, you know how you said you can start like with the same letter? Like, mm. isn't that called personification? Oh, close. It's called. The posh words, Elliot, is alliteration. Um, oh. It's something else, but something equally as good. But um, yes, that is the fancy word for it. Um, yeah, good oh, okay. question. Uh, and Seb, you've got a question? Um, it was on the one when you said, what would you think would be in the newspapers now? And I thought of a football one that some fans broke into Old Trafford. That is brilliant. And I'm glad you mentioned that, Seb, because I spent all weekend reading about it. So that is a really good story. And quite often sport is one of the things that people really want to read about. Very good. Okay, so if we go back to the screen. So if I show you the first picture, Okay, would anyone like to have a guess what the story was about? Okay, Elia? 
I think it might be about like it looks like the mayor maybe trying to ride a horse. Okay, very good. Does anyone have any other ideas? George, go on. Um, oh, the winner of a competition. Yeah. Yes. Very good idea. Yes, it could be winning a competition, and it certainly looks like it's dressed for a competition. Any other thoughts? Oh, Jacob. Mine's a bit like George's. Maybe a famous racehorse has been sold or has died or something like that. Fantastic. These are three brilliant ideas. Um, does anybody have an idea for a caption for the uh, for the photograph? Does anyone can anyone think of like a snappy way to sum it up? Any ideas, colleagues? Uh, what about? Um... Oh, hang on, George has got an idea. Oh, go on, George. Horse hits a big time. Fantastic. Excellent. That's brilliant. Okay, let's go with. Oh, Seb, you've got one as well. Go ahead. Um, when like when the horse died. Oh, that would be a sad caption, but yes, it could well be. Okay, brilliant. Right, let's have a look at the second image. And the second image is a little bit more difficult, I think. Okay, so here we have quite an unusual picture. Um, could anyone tell me what we can actually see in this picture? Okay, Seb, what can you see? Um, I can see a person being married on a boat. Oh, Seb, well done. That's fantastic. Um, Seb or anybody else, why do you think somebody might need to get married on a boat or maybe be taken to get married on a boat, maybe to go to church? Why would you need a boat? Go on, Elia. Maybe because like maybe the town got flooded or maybe it was just like a really fancy way to get Brilliant. to church. Yeah, I think you and Seb between you've got got the story there. So this was in the flooding in uh, the 1940s and it was so flooded in lots of towns and cities that to get to church if they wanted to get married and this couple obviously did they had to go by boat so well done everyone that's really great okay so let's go back right and let's go on so um the next bit is about adverts so people like to pay to put adverts in newspapers which helps them sell things but it also means that the people who own the newspapers get money. So I'm going to show you just a few adverts and I want you to have a go at seeing if you can work out what they're trying to sell. So can anyone have a go at the first one? Okay, um, let's see. Okay, Seb? Um, that they are trying to sell ice cream. They certainly are. Yes. So we've got an advert there for ice cream. And can anyone tell me what the other one is trying to sell? Okay, Elia. Maybe there's like a mayor from a different country coming to visit them, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Um, how about if you just have a look at that? Oh, Nathan, were you going to uh, have a go at this one? Me. Sorry, if I put you on the spot, Nathan, I wasn't sure if your hand was up. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, is that car wash? <laughs> oh, that's a really good idea. Yeah, it certainly could be, couldn't it? Um, it's actually a type of car. Um, that's, that's what that particular advert is. And let's just have a look at another couple of adverts. So, can anyone see what is being sold in any of these ones? George? Hats. Hats, yes. Today we don't wear a lot of hats, do we? But in the past, all men wore hats. Okay, and um, Jacob? Um, wait, can you put the picture back, please? Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. 
wait, wait. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, there's a, like a spa advert. No, no, no. It's, it's Wales, Wales. Sorry, that's Trampton Park. So where we at that man? No, that's great. Yes. Yeah, so it's actually, um, uh, yeah, so it's it's cheap railway trips. And if you're looking at that advert and you're thinking, gosh, there's a lot of like writing there. Um, today, if we saw an advert, it would probably just give you the Internet address and then we would go to their website and we would get all that information there. So you wouldn't need to put it in a newspaper advert. Um, but, you know, in the past, they didn't have the the Internet. OK, and um, I'm trying to work out who who who's probably the next to answer. Shall we take Elia? Um, I think that on the TV advert, that they must be selling like an object or something. It says Bush. So I think they're selling something called Bush, maybe perfume or something. That's a good idea. If we could just go back onto that screen. Yes, yeah, so actually, you wouldn't know this earlier, but a, a bush dealer is someone who actually sold the televisions um, and radios. But you're quite right thinking it's an advert because obviously you can see on that screen. Now, if you were a lot older than you are, if you were, for example, your nanny's age, you might remember that that's what appears on the screen is actually a very old children's programme and they had a puppet donkey. But you, you wouldn't know that because because you're very young. Okay, that's brilliant. Let's um, move on to the next one. So it's now time for you to have a go at writing your own front page. Now, if you've had a chance to print out the um, passports, the pass for this particular event, there are two different templates which have been given, which you can choose to use. Now, don't worry again if you haven't printed them out, because on the next slide, I'm going to put them up um, so that you can use them there. Um, what you will need is a piece of paper, um, a pen or a pencil, and for the picture and the advert, if you do have colours, obviously that would be great, but you don't absolutely need them. And we're going to give you about four or five minutes. Um, I'm not going to go anywhere, so if you want to check anything or have any questions, then obviously um, just give me a wave. Um, so if we just go on to the next one, you can see the two templates are there. So the one on the left, the Daily News, is a straightforward newspaper article where you're putting in the headline, the story, the picture and the advert. Um, the second template, My Amazing News, is where you could tell a story about yourself. Maybe you and your family um, did something recently or maybe um, something happened to you that you want to tell in a story, just like it was on um, the front page of a newspaper. And you can see that you've got two pages for that one. So you've got um, a bigger space to do a picture of that particular story. Um, Seb, did you have a question? Yes. Um, do you like Manchester United? Do I like? I, I, I'm sorry to tell you this, Seb, but I'm not a Manchester United fan. I'm an Aston Villa fan. But if I was a Manchester United fan, I'd probably be a lot happier because they win a lot more games. <laughs> Maybe you could do your story about Manchester United, Seb. Um, did somebody else have a question? I'm sure I saw a hand up, but maybe I imagined it. No, that's great. Carry on. We'll go back to the template so you can see it. And um, just give me a wave if you if you want to ask anything. Thank you.
Hi everyone, shall we um, start just finish the bit you're on? Um, don't worry if you haven't finished it all, I wouldn't really have expected you to all have finished in that time. Um, but it would be great if we could have a go at um, sharing and I can already see that Seb is showing his and I can see that it's football based, which is great. <laughs> Excellent. And we've got Elliot is about aliens. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Does anybody else fancy popping theirs up? You. Wait. Um, can I show you through my um, cover? Absolutely. Who is this? 2021. Go! For, for Man go for Man United. Man Edison Cavani scored, and look, he is the um goalie, and he is Edison Cavani, and it suited him to the goal. Excellent. Well done, Seb. That's great. And then we've got George over here. Peacock tax child. That's a brilliant, like, local news story. Uh, George, did you happen to notice that? Oh, no, well, oh, on one of the newspapers, there was a very small story, but it was about an escaped snake. Um, I didn't know whether you'd seen that one and thought, oh, I've got a good story. But um, is this something that happened to you, George? No. <laughs> well, it's really good, really imaginative. Um, Elia, how, how have you got on? Me? Yes. Good. Um, um, this is a story that we've been doing in school and um, because for English we're doing sci-fi okay. um, stories and stuff because for science we're learning about space. Um, and so I thought that I'd copy it and we're making our own. Excellent. Very good. Uh Nathan, did you want to share yours or not really? Um, yeah, so just wrote about uh, an old prop that went missing that was rediscovered. An, an old, old what, sorry? An old uh, TV prop. It's a, a bit of a pet passion of mine, old TV props and whatnot, and I'm interested in the one that. Ah, okay. Um, writing from a point of interest is always a really good thing to do. Yeah. Great. Okay, guys, that's really fantastic. Um, so we're just going to go back. We've only just got a couple more things to cover. Just a reminder that, um, you know, these stories you've started are really great. And, you know, if you want to send them to us at the archives, we would love that. Um, you know, I, either you could take a picture of them and send them to us. I'll give you the details in a moment. Um, so we're just going to have a quick look at today's stories. Um, I just wanted to show you a couple that were um, topical because you mentioned them. Um, so, would you mind? Oh, sorry, I'm so sorry. Yes, yeah, so the um, Prince Philip story. Yes, yeah, so just show you um, a couple of stories that you mentioned. I'm sure if we'd had time, we could have found all of them. But we have, there we go, we have about Prince Philip in that one. And then we also have, uh, Seb, I think it was mentioned on this one about the vaccinations. Um, I'm sure the story on Russia will be in this newspaper as well. Um, so that's great. So well done for, for, um, uh, for mentioning those ones. Um, so are there any final questions before we, I've just got a couple of things to tell you at the end, but we're, we're just coming to the end. Is there anything anyone wanted to ask about this session? Okay, Elia. Um, in the olden days, um, what type of uh, what they called um newspapers um did they usually read? Well, it depended. I mean, if you lived in somewhere like London, which is a huge city, there would be a lot of different types of newspapers and they would cater to different people's interests. Um, today, uh, you know, um, sorry, if you lived in a smaller place, you might only, you know, have one or two newspapers you could read and they would probably be ones that 
focused on local news. So it did depend a little bit where you were, but there are still lots of different types of newspapers and they focus on different things. So you would find even in the past, there would be a lot of different kinds of information out there. I think one of the big differences is that in the past, quite often in many countries, uh, not just in ours, um, the government would make sure that certain stories didn't appear in newspapers, often because it might make them look bad. Whereas today, um, the government tends to have less involvement with newspapers, so they are a little bit more freer to uh, write what they want. I think the oldest newspaper, national newspaper in the UK is The Times, the one that um, Gemma held up earlier. So that was the first one to be printed, I believe. Brilliant. Thank you, Kate. OK, any other questions, George? How long did it take to actually make a newspaper? Oh, that's a really good question. And I can't remember the answer. I was watching uh, a video about the printing press and I'm sure it was something like 5,000 copies an hour. Um, but it depends on the machinery that you have. Obviously, today they have incredibly, I mean, massive machines that fill massive rooms, whereas the ones in the past, they were probably looking at a couple of hundred, perhaps an hour. I am guessing a bit, but I would say it would probably be about something like that, but still much faster than handwriting them all. OK, anything else? OK, so let's just finish up where we were. Um, so um, if you've enjoyed today's session, um, you can do various things. You can first of all do some of the activities on the passport that I've mentioned. Um, as I said, if you do finish your newspaper and you want to share it with us, um, please do send it to us. You can send it by email, pop it up on social media um, if one of your parents wants to do that for you. Um, we're also going to be having an open day, which we mentioned at the last session. Um, we haven't got a date yet because of, you know, with the pandemic and everything, but just uh, keep an eye on that and you guys will be the first to know. We'll have a really fun packed day um, and you'll be able to come and visit. Um, so I just want to finally tell you about our next session, which is going to be a really special one because it's all going to be about children and young people. So it's going to be in a month's time and it's called Unheard Voices. So we've called the session Unheard Voices because so much of what we know about what happened in history is from the viewpoint of the adults. There's not much actually written by children at all. And we think that what uh, children have to say is very important. And in this next session, we want to hear your voice, not a parent, not a teacher, not a politician. The next session will be all about you. So do you want to help researchers in the future have a reliable first hand account of what it was like to be a child or young person in Gloucestershire in 2021? Send us your story and we will look after it for future generations and we will have one of our archivists explaining how all of this will work. We'll be looking at how attitudes have changed towards children and young people over the last few hundred years and trying to find out whether children today have a better life than they did in the past. And we'll also be thinking about thing, how things, uh, sorry, about things that haven't changed. For example, children have always loved to eat sweets, have fun and have sometimes got into trouble. And we'll be finding out about what happened to children who broke the law, about what type of jobs children had and what were the most popular toys and games in the past. So find out these answers to, uh, to these and also to many more questions in the next Passport to the Past session. So I hope that you can all join us. I really hope that you've enjoyed today. Um, we're now going to do a big group goodbye as always. So if you would like to unmute yourself, there we go. And um, my trusty colleague Kate is joining us as well, which is great. OK, so um, on the count of three, big goodbye. One, two, three. Goodbye. Bye. See you next time. See you next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye, Bye Kate. Bye, Auntie Jennifer. Bye. Bye.